This 10 minute video will demonstrate the speed of designing a simple fixture using Key Crater Prime. We will walk through all the steps to quickly model the custom blue parts shown here and locate the screws used to hold them down. The completed models will be ready to pass on to NC machining software or a 3D printer. This video is primarily for the first time user of this Key Crater Prime interface. That said, if you've already poked around and figured out some basics on your own, you will likely also benefit from some of the tips shown here. Like most manufacturing design, for this job we start with the part model. These solids would typically be imported from the original CAD files used by the design team. On another level, I've also preloaded and positioned an appropriately sized fixture plate model. The level tree is simply a sorted list of the contents of this design and also provides a straightforward way to hide or prevent selection of layers of the model depending on what area I'm working on. To prepare for building the first part, we want to set a construction plane, or C-plane, on the top of the plate, and then switch to the top view. This makes it easier to see the whole locations in our plate. I'm also going to set the active level. If you're following along, I should also point out that I've disabled the chain filter and profile filter options, which we will not need for this tutorial. We're going to create a solid by dynamically sketching in 3D with the block primitive command. This is the simplest and fastest way to build. I'm picking locations for the bottom corners that will provide room for fastener holes at a later step. To best see the height of our block, I'll switch to the front view. We want this portion of the fixture to stay clear of the flange on the part. So at this point, we've created a solid. You can see the count column of our active level 3.1 in the level tree is now one. The Dyna handle objects still attached to the new solid indicate that the solid is in edit mode. This allows the definition locations to be easily adjusted along the principal axes like this. Let's say we want to set the height of this block to 2 inches. Just click on the blue arrow and enter 2. To accept these adjustments, use OK. I'll use the escape key to exit the command. The next portion of the fixture will touch the front of the flange, so we'll set the C-plane there and sketch another solid. In this case, there are circular edges in that plane which are easy to select, so that's the fastest method. This time, I'll use positions on existing geometry to size the block. You can hold the shift key during positioning if you want to snap to the nearest position on an edge or curve. The original corner positions I picked were convenient, but I actually want this block to be taller. So I'll pull it up and then re-extend the bottom. While dragging a dyna handle axis, I can automatically snap to projected geometry positions, which saves time then escape to exit the command. Note that the count on level 3.1 is now two. These two solids represent a single part, so let's combine them together using the unite command. Holding the shift key here prioritizes selection of bodies, which will save a couple clicks in this case. Note that the status bar at the bottom of the application provides feedback that two entities are selected. The context menu shows what I'm able to do with the current selection. Let's quickly build another solid at the other flange. First, we'll update the active level in C-plane. Let's also set the display view to the same face. This block needs to contact the flange like the last one, so the initial rectangle is similar. For the second position, the cursor is finding snap positions on the plate, which is perfect for the height and fine for the width. The base rectangle is always parallel to the C-plane, fixed at the depth of the first position. This means any position picked for our second corner will automatically project to that plane. Rotating our view will help us see the depth. What we need here is a part thick enough to cleanly cover a couple of holes in our plate. Now we need to turn this simple solid block into an L-shape similar to the first part. There are a lot of ways we could accomplish this. But I want to show you some simple 3D slicing capabilities unique to Key Creator. I've set the system color to brown to help you see what happens here. The trim and break commands are used commonly and work on solids in 3D the same way as they do on line and curve entities in 2D drawing. I first pick the entity I want to edit on the end that will stay the same. Then I select the curve or edge that will function as the cutting wire 
This wire has sliced the solid along the C-plane Z-axis and created a new brown solid. With the block cut in two, I can quickly move this face back toward the flange. If you find that the snapping positions are not helpful during a dynamic drag like this, just hold the control key to temporarily disable them. The other slice we need to handle on this part is to trim off the end that overhangs the fixture plate. Set the C-plane back to the top of the fixture plate. We can use either edge on the end of the fixture as the cutting wire. The trim first command will chop the overhang off. With the basic shape complete, I'll unite these solids together like before. Note that the final color comes from the first solid selected. Next, let's drill holes which can be used to hold the flanges in place. The customer part geometry can be used to save a few clicks here. The first prompt asks for the face to be drilled. The second prompt asks for a circular edge or entity which defines both drill diameter and axis. In this case, either edge of the hole will work so we don't need to be especially careful picking. To drill the other holes, we need to back up a step in the active command to select the face on the first part. Keycur allows us to select the edges on the customer part right through our solid, which can save a couple seconds needed to spin the model around to see them more clearly. To hold our parts to the fixture plate, they will need holes for fasteners. We'll use counterboard holes to recess the heads of some socket head cap screws. Direction and starting point is required for these types of holes, so let's set a C-plane. Hovering over a tapped hole in our plate shows they are half-inch diameter. Key Creator includes a complete library to make this quick. We use a loose fit on these because precise location will be controlled with dowel pins. The surest way to correctly set the XY position of these counterboard holes is to snap on the holes in our plate. It's critical we align on these center positions, so let's disable the endpoint, midpoint, and quadrant snaps. To force these tapped hole locations to project up to the C-plane, where the counterboard holes need to start, we'll also enable the Z-lock switch. If you're new to 3D modeling, you might be more comfortable taking extra time switching view before picking entities or locations. That's fine for beginners, but as you can see, taking extra time for that is not necessary. Let's also pop in the fasteners on level 5. To check for what length is needed, we can hover over the edges. To get the measurements from the tooltips, The C-plane is still good for orientation, but as you can see from the preview, these fasteners are appropriately located under their head. We just need to go back to the Z-free mode and then pick the center of a circular edge at the correct depth in each hole. The Z-free Z-lock switch is another good example of the unique speed advantages used by expert key creators. There are four other simple ways to get the same result, but this one is the fastest in this situation. The last part of this design is locating and drilling 3 8 inch holes for dowel pins in the blue solids we've built and the purchase fixture plate. We need to avoid existing holes, but it's hard to see all these locations through the shaded solids. The most practical way to tackle this challenge is to go old school with wireframe shade mode and drop in some simple point entities. To set up for this, we'll set the active level to 10, color it orange, and the C-plane on the top of the plate again. Shade mode options are on the context menu. Now the top view gives us a good look at everything. While inserting the points, we might want to snap to geometry positions, so let's turn on Z-lock to be sure all positions project to the C-plane. On this side of the fixture, cursor positioning the dowel pins around here will work well. On the other side, 
let's use the two pause option on the conversation bar and select sets of circles and or fastener edges. This will get us points exactly halfway between tapped holes in the plate. This is when good level tree habits pay off. We just turn off level three so we can see the point entities underneath. This time the simple hole command will be used to make blind holes one inch deep at these points. To prevent accidentally selecting positions nearby the points, disable the center position snap. To finish the dowel pin holes, turn level 3 back on and level 2 off and flip the model over. Depending on your shop, point entities located at the hole positions may be helpful for NC programming. If not, it's a good idea to leave them on a construction level so they can be easily gotten out of the way. This simple fixture is now essentially complete and you've seen a variety of basic construction techniques in KeyGrader. The initial design file is available so that you can easily practice these steps on your own and take the additional steps to precisely position faces and features which we skipped over for time. There are many other mechanical 3D CAD programs which can model these simple parts. It is the speed and flexibility of KeyCreator that make it the best CAD tool in the world for cranking through solo manufacturing projects. Please be sure to also watch our other tutorial videos on editing and model reuse to get a sense of how Key Critter Prime powers through those tasks.